So with that being said, let me first introduce myself. So if you don't do not know, my name is Evan Brown. I'm the CEO of a company called Vision Burgers, where I simply just stand in the middle, in the gap, as the saints may say, and I help individuals get to a point where they're not just having dreams and having goals, but they're actually moving forward and bringing those things to life. For example, I've been doing this for about four years. I've done everything from conferences to workshops to writing and publishing for books. I have about five books written myself from websites to graphics. And most importantly, my favorite, favorite, favorite part is the individual coaching that I provide for businesses, churches, ministries, uh, groups, and corporations. Like That's the part I love. Nothing else, um, I know that I am what you would call a solutionist. I specialize in bringing forth solutions. And I'm so glad that I realized that before I turned 30, I realized I was a solutionist at age like 25, 26. And it really has made me, um, helped me to be able to mold and shape and direct my life to do and to do things and to basically be what I like to be, what I like to do every single day. Like every day I get up and I fix it, I figure out problems, I find solutions for people's problems. That's it. Every day, you know, and it brings me great joy. It, you know, it brings me great profit as well. But most importantly, I get to learn so much about different endeavors. So that's me. To say, I woke up one morning. I said, you know what? I've realized I've got a knack for being organized and finding the answer. So I said that I'm I'm, I'm 30 now. Um, just moved to Chicago, Illinois, about a year ago, and I am really one of those that can stand up and say every day, I'm living out my dream. I am literally living out my dream. I have coupled my experiences, both good and bad. Um, my experiences, both jobs that I love and absolutely jobs that I hated. And I begin to couple all of that really to build a company that allows me to really just help people. You know, like some of us have some really easy lives and some of us have some really simple purposes and passions. And mine is simply just to help people and not just to help people just figure out stuff and to find purpose and find their reason for living, but also help them find how to make a little money. So I'll be honest, this is the thing about it. We're not living this life to be broke, to be unhappy, and to be miserable. We're doing what we're doing, and we have passions, and a lot of those passions can make us a nice penny. Now, granted, I understand that some people's passions can make them a couple million dollars in 10 years, but some of our passions will make us feel like we made $10 million. For example, nothing brings me greater joy than getting off a coaching call and having a client say, man, I had no idea how I was gonna start, and now I know what to do. That right there, if I could take that to the bank, <laughs> Man, oh man, I would be wealthy, like beyond, but I would be on like some Steve Jobs, Bill Gates type stuff. However, that's not the case, but to me, that gives me a sense of purpose, gives me a sense of fulfillment, and I would not trade it for the world. So I'm going to ask you this before we go any further. What is the thing that makes you happy? What is the thing that makes you feel fulfilled? And yeah, this is the part where you can jump into the chat and drop it right through. I just told you what mine was. Mine was seeing people and hearing people say, you know what? I can do this. I figured out how to make my thing, make my thing happen. What's your thing? And guess what? Because I love this and I want to hear your answer, I'm going to actually wait to see what you have to say. So go ahead and answer. Boom, there's the first one. Seeing people succeed. What you got? And as you guys do that, so that gives you my preference as to why I am doing what I am doing here today. Um, so most people ask, I started a how-to series um, to begin this summer. I said, you know what, I'm going to help as many people as I can figure out how to do whatever it is their thing is they like to do. So some people, I started off with the how to start a business, how to start a nonprofit, how to eliminate I missed what you said because I'm working and trying to listen to it. And I get it. That's the thing. Um, how to multitask. I started off with this, this amazing how-to series because I realized that a lot of people really have great ideas and great concepts. They just don't know where to start. So my goal was to finish out 2019 was to provide how-tos that help everyone no matter where you are. Free how-tos at that. Help everyone no matter where you are, what you do, get to the place that you're trying to be one step at a time. A, real, a really good quote I heard one of my teachers say over the years, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And that's what we're doing. We're taking one bite at a time. So with that being said, this brings us to today's beautiful Chloris class. It is called How to Eliminate Distractions. Now, if you are anything, um, if you are anything like me, and probably like everybody else on this call, whether you're on Facebook or on the Zoom, you can pretty much honestly say, hey, you know what, I've lived a pretty distracted life. 
Now, I'll be honest. I think I've been able to make and garner some great success over the years. But I think that I've been able to, if I would have been a little bit more focused and had a few less distractions, I probably would be a whole lot more successful than what I am now because I realize that distractions have always served and always will serve as roadblocks and deterrences from you getting from this level to the next level. You hear me? Like roadblocks have, that's all they are. Distractions are literally just trying to stop you dead in your tracks. And so tonight we're going to dive into how to eliminate those things. So I'm going to first start off by telling you, give you a little insight on me. So I'm not doing this just because it's fun or it sounds good. I'm doing this because I have lived a distracted life. I know you're probably saying, what the guy that does life coaching, business coaching, the pastor, how on earth has he lived a distracted life? Well, let me tell you, I have lived an extremely distracted life because I realized um, a principle that I'm going to share with you guys later on in this broadcast, how easy it is to become distracted and to stay distracted and even worse, to build your life around your distractions. It's almost like when you're walking with a limp, you're walking with a crutch, you start to live your life based upon walking with that crutch. That's what a lot of us have done. So many of us have been distracted for so long. I'm not going to even put limps of time out there. I'm not going to say one year, two year, five year, or 10 years. We have been distracted so long that when things are clear and when things are breezy and when things are almost situated and stable and secure, we don't know what to do. Have you guys ever met somebody that you know that is literally probably just, just the definition of, um, we all have it. We all have a dysfunctional brain. If you're not careful, if you're not sure, you might be the dysfunctional brain. That friend that is so dysfunctional that they are so used to things being a mess. Like the friend that is used to living in chaos. Like the friend that has literally adjusted their life to living around mess and chaos and stuff just being everywhere. That's how we have become with distractions. We have actually become one with distractions. We have welcomed distractions in. We've allowed distractions to build a room, to get a nice room, to get the best room in the house, set up their, set up just whatever, just set up whatever they want to set up just for us to be able to have to fight so much harder to do the little things like find our purpose, walk in our purpose, make a little extra money, write a book, write the song, start a business, uh, go back to school, go get another degree, be happy, find a sense of joy, find a sense of laughter. Distractions have literally come in and been able to move us around. They've been able to ruin our lives, guys. Like I promise you, if you're not seeing the success that you want and that you desire to see, it's probably because at some point you've been distracted and within your distractions, you have found safety. You have found a false sense of security. You have found a space where you think all is well and you're working entirely too hard for things to be well. So let's jump into it. Everything that I just listed was your introduction to my distracted life. Yes, everything that I just went down through, that was me. That was me. And if I'm, if I'm not careful, that can easily be me again. I didn't even list the distractions that people cause. I just went through those things that are just normal, like trying to figure out what to do, what your purpose is, why you're here. But, and then you got to add this, this. Yeah, you won't even get into that right now because a lot of us are distracted by people that just need to go. Toxic people like that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump on in. So I wanna open, open up with this, this common quote. It's not really that common. I want it to be common because I came up with it. So I really want it to be one day on a billboard somewhere. But I said, there is no such thing as a distracted success. There is absolutely, positively, no such thing as a distracted, distracted success. Let me tell you why. Because even if you're able to garner some success, some accomplishments, in the midst of you having moments or spans of time where you're distracted, if you're not really as successful as you could have been. Like, think about it. If you, um, like, like, really think that through. Okay, you know what? I made a lot of money this quarter, all while having five or six active distractions in my life. So what happened if you would have moved those five or six active distractions? You see where I'm going there? You could have doubled what you did. That's why I can say there's absolutely no way to be a distracted success because you always miss the mark. Like what sense does it make? Take, I'll break it down. So if you were, you were here, right? So this is where you are. This is your success meter right here. You can use the marker. Success right here. This is you successful with toxic people in your life. 
with you um, distracted by your lack of discipline, with you having no commitment to yourself, with you having no organization, no structure, no time management, and this is, your, this is how successful you were able to become right here, right? So I had all those things I listed. So when, if you got rid of um, toxic people here, <laughs> if you got rid of unhealthy relationships and unhealthy patterns and, and routines here, if you got rid of, or you added some discipline to your life by way of your finances or just your time management, your organization, you see how far you climbed by simply just removing one, two, or three distractions. Because this is the thing. Nobody has a lot of distractions. We're all distracted by the same three, four, five things. Now, they may come in different forms, or they may show themselves in different ways, but the distractions are always the same, and they have one goal, to get you to cap out here when you should have capped out there. Distractions are striving to make you think that what you hit was your max. That's not it. Distractions want you to think that that is your max. If you look at where I did, I strategically did this on this sheet of paper for a reason. If you think that this is your max, this is an entire sheet of paper. You start off here and distractions tell you that this is my max. This is as far as I can go. This is as far as I can make it. As if there is not a whole nother half sheet of paper where you could have accomplished so much more. You could have made so much more. You could have impacted so many other lives all if you just chose to get rid of a few distractions. So let's get into the educational part of it. So if you're taking notes, start taking them now. Guess what? What is a distraction, right? I'm not gonna give you my own personal definition. I'm gonna give you somebody else's definition because those seem to be a little bit easier to receive. Distractions are a anything. Distractions are anything that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else. Distractions are anything. That can be anything, that can be anyone, that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else. I'm going to ask you a very serious and honest and transparent question that I want you to answer right now in your heart, in your living room, on your phone, in the chat, whatever you want to do. You ready? How distracted am I? On a scale of 1 to 10, how distracted are you right now? After all that I just opened up and said, after me reading the definition that right, how distracted are you on a scale of 1? And I want you to be honest. I'm going to say today, because of uh, me processing my notes and me kind of being intentional about learning this information, I'm going to say that I am currently still at a six. That's right. I think I'm at a six. Oh, you got somebody else that says they're about a six. Okay, great. What else? What you got? <laughs> somebody said a lot. <laughs> a seven. Okay. I appreciate the honesty because this is the thing about it. When you're honest, you can finally make some progress. You can't fix anything that you're not willing to address and not just address it, but address it honestly. So let me tell you guys something. Now that we can all accept the fact that we're a bit distracted and because there are so many things that we want to do and that we desire to do that we are committed to doing, we're going to break through some of these things today. So what is the purpose of a distraction, someone might ask? Um, they all have one purpose. A distraction has one purpose. We got another seven to shift your focus off of what is most important or what is necessary at that moment. I know, nothing deep, nothing profound, nothing life changing. That's simply just, it's got the tone of my voice changed. Uh, a distraction honestly has one purpose. It is to shift your, your focus off what is important or necessary at that moment. How many times can you honestly say, you know what, distractions have literally taken me all the way off the course that I needed to be on. It's a serious thing. It's something that can happen as small as every day. And it's something that can happen as, as large as a couple of distractions can make your decade terrible or your decade not be as successful as you could have been because you were distracted at some of the worst times possible. That's it. It's only distractions are only there to attack your focus. So let me tell you why, what focus is. So focus is putting something at the center of your interest or your activity. Focus is very simple. Focus is having something be the center of your interest or activity. Let me tell you what happens when a man, when a man or a woman is focused. You ready? I'm going to read this to you. You are quicker on your feet. You are quicker in your production. You are quicker in your activities. You are quicker in your mind. You are quicker in your thoughts. When you are focused, you are able to move and move fast and move well all at the same time. So if I, was a, if I was a distraction, right, and I knew that you um, sitting over there uh, at your desk literally have an idea that's going to change the 
water pollution problem in your entire city. We're also going to make you plenty of money. Or if you over there have lived through some of the experiences that I know that will be able to um, literally save the lives of many kids ages 13 through 17. Or if you, um, Isaiah, are the person that is sitting there at your desk having a hard time writing out the plan that is actually going to transform a whole lot of people because it's not just a business, it's a not-for-profit. Or if you, Jay, are sitting there with the idea, with the with the, um, with the thoughts and with the intellect and with the resources and with the notes in mind that you can write down and write a book that would actually transform the way people view other people, whether it's mental, uh, mental health or mental illness or how to, how to deal with children or how to defeat poverty. If you have all this greatness sitting in front of you over here, if I'm a distraction, all I have to do is, hey, let me just do things that eat at your focus to make you not do what you're called to do. Let me just eat at your focus. You're not able to produce what you're called to produce. Let me just bother you enough and irritate you enough so that you are not focused on what it is that you're supposed to be doing while you're here. Because this is the thing about it. Distractions arise all the time, but there is a special type of distraction that shows up when you are starting to move and do those things that you are purposed in life to do. You know, those distractions are the ones that like make you can't eat, can't sleep, you literally can't think, like all of those things, those are so powerful and so annoying, but yet they can easily be eliminated when you understand that focus is a priority. In a day and age where so many of us um, our focuses and our energies are split. I'm going, I don't want to get into that too early, but when everything about our lives is split and we're taught to be um, a, ma a jack of all trades and a master of none, we take this ideology into every area of our life and it yields us no results, especially when it comes to focus. I'm going to stand right here and tell you, you cannot be focused on too many things at one time. It's not possible. You'll never be able to actually complete some things and really complete them in the way they should be completed if you're focused on too many different things at one time. Ask me how I know. Because I consider myself a jack of a few trades and I have enough sense to know that I've got to stop, focus in on one at a time to get it done with optimum results in the best way and also in the fastest way. And if I see myself, that's how I see me, right? That's me. You, as great as you are, you still can't afford to do too many things at one at too many different times at the same time. I stand here today in front of you to tell you that you are not that good. And it's not that you're not that good because you're not able. You're just not designed to be like that. You're designed to really put your all into something. You're designed to really stand there and make a difference and really impact one area at a time. You are actually called to get in one area, stay there, build it up, then go, then leave, then move on. Like who told you that you had to be great at so many different things at one time? I don't know who told us that. Actually, what it is, that is a distraction within itself because it makes, you, it makes you begin to split your energy and split your efforts and split your, your logic and split your, um, your critical thinking skills and put them in five different areas when they, if you put all that into one, you could have made some amazing progress in that one area. So that's it, that's one benefit of being focused. Next benefit of being focused is when you're focused, you produce higher quality work. Simple as that, when you are focused, you produce quality. You know what somebody can tell? They can tell when something isn't quality, when they first look at it. It doesn't take rocket scientists, it doesn't take an engineering degree, it doesn't take a doctorate from Harvard, it doesn't take a business degree from NYU, People can tell when something is not high quality. And generally, they look at it and the first thought, their first thought is not that you can't, it's that, oh, you probably got a lot going on. Ask me how I know. I've put out great things over the last few years that individuals have been able to say to me, yeah, it was good, but I can tell you had a lot going on. Talk about hard work, things like, you can see my scars, you can see my wounds, you can see my, just, you can see how distracted I am in what I produced? Oh my God. But guess what? It's true. You can, just like how we can always tell when something's rushed. <laughs> we can tell when something wasn't fully thought out. We can tell when something is premature or above, ahead of its time. We can see all of that stuff. We can, people can see how distracted you are and what it is you produce. The next thing that benefits of being, one of the benefits of being focused, you have less stress. When you're focused, you're laser focused, that means your mindset is locked, you're locked, you're loaded, 
and you're getting stuff done. When you're locked and you're loaded, you don't get stressed out. Ask me how I know. Again, in the last year, I've had seasons of stress that were up and down. Pretty transparent, I don't mind. My stress levels have gone up and down. But I can always sell, tell where my focus was based upon where my stress level was. When my stress level was high, my focus was everywhere. My focus was not on what it should have been. It was on too many different things. It was on, focus, oh, it was on something that it should never have been on. When my stress levels were low, I was extremely focused. I knew what I was working at. I knew what I was working towards. I had my goals clearly defined. Like when my stress levels are low, your focus is generally high. Remember that. If you're stressed out right now, shift it. Focus in on something. Pick one, two things and focus on that. Just to decrease your stress levels, I promise you, it's all about perspective. It's all about where your energies are going. We're gonna talk about that too. And next thing, one of the benefits of being focused is momentum. Momentum. So I know you guys have heard of momentum. It's a scientific term that we learned with Isaac Newton in what, middle school, elementary school, where pretty much when something is stopped, it's never going to garner any, any, any kind of progress. It's never going to pick up what it could pick up unless it's moving. That is a, in a very simplistic way. That's how we are supposed to be. We are supposed to be, uh, we, are, we, are, we are called to move off momentum. We are called to create momentum and take momentum on because you know what happened is that when you do get a little tired, when you have momentum working, I got this whole beautiful write out about how momentum affects the mind. I'm gonna send it to you guys in my notes. But it's like, once you get started, your mind is wired like this. Once your mind starts to go and starts to see progress and starts to see things check off your task list. For an example, I use a physical planner every day, right? My planner, I literally list out what I'm doing. On Sunday night, I'm listing out my planner for the week, Monday through Thursdays. I don't believe in working on Fridays. And so with that being said, what happens when I start to get up on Monday? You know what? I'm making this happen. I'm going to go. I'm knocking out one thing. Check off my planner. Knock out the second thing. Check off my planner. Now, when I've gotten to thing number seven and I've checked that off, I don't look at my list and say, whew, you know what? I can stop here. I don't look at it and say, oh, we got, you know what? I've done enough for today. When I look at that seven and realize there's only 12 on that list, I say to myself, I've got momentum going, let me finish strong. A lot of us have to get into a mindset where we are getting to a place where we intentionally create space for us to garner momentum. I promise you, it's easy, it's much easier to keep going than it is to stop and start over. I see it every week when I go to the gym because I'm in and out of the gym, trying to be consistent, trying to be disciplined. When my momentum is going, when I'm consistent in my attendance, it's so much easier to push myself and keep rolling. But the moment when I decide to take a few days off and then like, oh, gosh, I should have got up. Oh, you know what? Oh, I should have got up. Once that momentum is gone, it's hard to pick back up. But this is why distractions and identifying your distractions is very important. Now you, I know you guys are probably saying like, we're on focus. We're on focus right now because your focus is the central point and the easiest way and the best way for you to defeat distractions. Eliminate distractions is if you are focused and know what you're focused on and know why you're focused. This is the thing. If you guys pick up and apply this um, this um, moment, uh, this principle on momentum, it'll change how you look at your days. It'll change how you move move without your move throughout your days. Because you say, you know what? I'm not just doing stuff just to do stuff. I'm doing stuff to build momentum. I'm building momentum in my mind. I'm building momentum in my progress. So when I get to item number seven on my task list, I'm not saying, whew, I've done enough for today. I look at that and say, you know what? Look how far I've come. I only have a little bit farther to go. Let me keep on going. So whatever kind of distractions are I trying to arise, whether it's me now all of a sudden I'm hungry or I'm getting, I'm getting an influx in phone calls, that stuff doesn't matter because you know what? The momentum has been built. Is this helping you guys? Is this making sense to you? Let me know. I, I hope it is. I really hope it is, but I know that when it comes to the mentality, you have to think momentum, momentum. It's a train. It's like once that train gets rolling, <laughs> like once that train gets going, ain't no stopping it. That's what you have to be. You have to look at yourself like Thomas the train. <laughs> I know that's a young one when we were kids, but look at that. Like once that freight train gets going, it's literally just about nothing that's going to stop it. Have you guys ever seen a train run into something and keep on going like whatever that was there was never there? It happens all the time. Great, okay, great, 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 great. So let me tell you one, th one more thing about distractions. That distractions are highly deceptive because your distractions will make you feel like you can pick up where you left off and that's not always the case. So distractions will then make you think, oh, you know what, I can start back up today 
or who I'm just gonna pick back up tomorrow. Let me tell you something. Distractions are tricking you into thinking that it's gonna be easy to start back up or start over. That's why I just talked about momentum. If you don't hear anything else I said today or tonight, hear the process and the principle behind having that momentum, getting things done, looking at how far you're coming and keeping going with the momentum you have in front of you. You ready? So let's make this spiritual. Because I can never, I can never not make things spiritual. I know. So um, most people are unable to fulfill their um, their I fulfill or identify their purpose because they are distracted with the desire to be busy and productive. I'm gonna say it one more time. Mo I'm gonna say it my way. Most people aren't getting anywhere. They can't find their purpose. They can't move in their purpose. They can't walk out purpose because they are they're drunk on the the desire to be busy. Translation, most of us are distracted by being busy and we're busy with the wrong stuff. We're busy on everything and everybody else's stuff except what we're supposed to be busy on. Does that make sense? Should I, do I need to take it a little bit more Ebonics? I'm from the South, I'm from Atlanta. I got one more good one in me. So let me tell you something. You're too busy with everybody else's stuff to get your own stuff done. You're distracted by the thought of being busy. You're distracted by the desire to be busy. And it's the, the worst part about it, you're busy with everything except what's yours. That's it, you. You are busy doing everything except what's yours. Now, how much sense does that make? I mean, you've helped this person, you've helped that person, you've helped them, you've helped her, you've helped them, you've helped them, you've helped them, you've helped them, you've helped all these people and you never did what you were supposed to do. You're distracted. I know you're making progress. Woo, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm helping all these people. But guess what? You're so distracted. You're distracted by everybody else's work that you're not doing your own. Good check. Good check. It's reality. Guess what? I Guess who knows? Ask me how I know. That's like my favorite line. Because it was me. I've been there. I was so busy making sure that I helped build the visions and the ideas and the concepts of everybody else around me that I forgot that I had one too. And that mom was just as time sensitive and just as needed and necessary as everybody else's was. You can write a book on that. Write a book on that. <laughs> like write a book on that. At some point you have to realize you have to come out of the seat of support staff and become the visionary. Because you know why? If you don't do what you're, you don't do those things that you are purposed and placed on this earth to do, guess whose fault that is? Guess how um, Pastor Hart Ramsey, he spoke in my church, well, not my church, our, the church that I attend, my, whew, whew, distracted. <laughs> um, Pastor Hart Ramsey said something two weeks ago. He said that if you don't do what you're supposed to do, if you don't walk out purpose and identify why you're here, people are going to die. And you would have thought the church is quiet. And I'm, I was in my seat like this. But because I felt it. I felt that I knew that if I didn't get on, get in line and stay focused and eliminate distractions and do what needs to be done, that the lives of other people were on in the balance. Now, maybe that might not have always been a physical death, but some of that stuff may have been a, a lapse in purpose. I, you guys would be mind, your minds would be blown if I told you how many people come across me or write me on Facebook or Instagram and um, or email me and say, thank you so much for I happened to click on one of your webinars or somebody shared it to me or tagged it to me. And I needed to hear that help me really get my life together. And I'm like, man, I didn't even know you. But that's amazing. Because you know why? Because I helped somebody get in alignment and go forward and do what needs to be done. And now somebody else is not just living a life, they're living a life on purpose. So guess we're gonna go back to our point. Don't be the person that is so busy doing everything else except what they're, what they're supposed to do. This is the thing about it. This is the honest truth. You can be productive and still in the wrong lane. You can literally change. You could, you could be making, like, making great progress and still be in the wrong lane. It's so easy to become distracted by doing and but not doing the right things. That's, that's the basis of it. Let's keep this simple. It's so easy to be distracted by just doing and not doing the right things. And not necessarily that things are wrong, but the right things for you and for your life and for your purpose. Amen? Amen. Next point. Distractions are a matter of discipline and focus. Let me tell you something. There are some things that I know the whole firsthand that 
you have to and you can spiritualize and, and take to the next level and just speak in tongues and put oil on. And then sometimes things are just as simple as they are. Distractions are a matter. Snap. is not a prayer issue. It's a commitment issue. <laughs> now, it's a commitment issue that you can take to God in prayer. But you're going to stay distracted as long as you're not committed, as long as you're not disciplined, and as long as you're not focused. You're going to continue to be uh, beat up and taken out and taken under by distractions. Yeah. Best way to say that. So when you get done praying, I want you guys to get up and make a practical plan to help you move forward and defeat distractions and to really walk out your life, walk out purpose and really be who you're supposed to be. We'll get you further to further to that next time. But I do want to ask this, when was the last time you made a commitment to you? Like when was the last time you Tyrone or you Alicia or you Contessa or you Monique or you Miss Dirt or you Isaiah, when was the last time you made a commitment to you? I'm going to wait for an answer because I want to know. I actually want to know, when was the last time you made a commitment to you? I'm gonna play the Jeopardy music. All right, we got a couple. We got one person that I made a commitment to myself on Sunday. Ms. Jerk said I made a commitment to myself a couple weeks ago. Kristen said I made a commitment to myself today. Um, Leah was honest it's been a while. Tyrone says a few times this year, but I didn't follow through. I'm gonna tell you guys this, one of the main reasons people fail that we fail into as far as making progress and really being all that we can be is that we're committed to everything but us. We're committed to everyone but us. We're literally, our commitment level, we're able to commit. We don't have commitment issues. We have, we, but we are, we are terrible with deciding and placing our commitment in the right lanes, in the right hands, in the right places. It's like, seriously, we don't have commitment issues. We just don't think, we don't necessarily, we don't always see the value and how paramount it is for us to be committed to us. Let me tell you what happens when you commit to you. So when I committed to me, I committed to me a couple of times. I failed a couple of times. Been a couple of times I was very successful. And this most recent time, I committed to myself. I said, you know what? I do believe that my life's gonna be one of those where I actually travel the globe, whether teaching, um, training, just being able to just be amongst people, um, giving them a, a boost of joy, a boost of encouragement, but most importantly, helping them strategize, strategize and take uh, what they have in front of them to the next level. And I said, okay, you know what? So my commitment to myself, because I do believe that is a part of my life's work, I'm going to commit myself to becoming healthy, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. So that means things like reading. That meant things like getting up, going to the gym. So I said, you know what? There's no need for God to send me to Asia to consult with a group of Asian billionaires and tycoons. And then I'm like physically unfit to get there. And when I do get there, I'm just in a bad spot physically. Because people don't realize your physical health, your mental health, physical health, Mental health is literally, it, it starts separate. You think it's separate, but it's not that much. It's probably like this much space between your physical health and your mental health. And if you don't start to take one or two or both of those serious, you'll start to see some major, major, major declines in your quality of life. Because they're not, they're the same. So I started to do things like try to position myself. I made a goal. I made my, my, my discipline wall. I'm trying to focus on three different areas to finish out my year. One of those things being my physical body. I've realized that when I work out, I feel better. When I run, I feel better. When I, when I go to the gym, if I have been stressed, I'm able to leave that stress in a healthy place and, a, and a, with, a healthy, with a healthy coping mechanism to uh, release and relieve myself of stress. So that means when, I'm, when I go to the gym, I'm able to come home now and I'm not just able to fall asleep, I'm able to get quality rest the next morning, even though I might have a tougher day today, when I wake up the next morning, I'm rested. I'm rested. And when I'm rested, my mind is fresh. When my mind is fresh, I can get on the phone and ideas flow. I can get on the phone and concepts. I can get in front of my white paper and stuff just starts to just get out there because I'm rested. My, my body's fresh, my mind is fresh. 
it's important that we make certain commitments to yourself. I'm gonna encourage you guys to go back and then refresh your commitment and make sure you stick to it because I'm telling you, it's so much stuff working together at one time. Um, and another reason why it's hard to stay committed to yourself is that there is no audience there. Um, so when I actually look back and say, what are some of the reasons that I've not been able to really, really, really stay committed to myself over the years when I've made commitments to myself, why have not did it? It's sometimes because there wasn't really an audience there. There was no system or, um, system or place or space for accountability. So I'm also gonna encourage you guys this, get somebody that holds you accountable with your stuff, with your dreams, with your commitments. Because this is the thing about it, sometimes you do need help. I did a broadcast a couple weeks ago and I said, hey, you know what the greatest thing I did was realize that I was never above getting help. Whether it's a counselor, whether it's a strategist, I literally paid somebody to sit down with me to do, to, to do with me what I do for other people when it comes to branding and marketing and building. Best, hundred, best couple hundred dollars investment I made, but I realized that I was never above help. I was at a place where I needed some additional eyes. I don't be the person that is afraid to get the help you need. Let me also tell you what happens when you're not focused. You end up being unproductive, you're wasteful of your energy, you're unwelcoming, and you're confidence-less. When you are not focused, you are unproductive, you waste a whole lot of energy. And I'm gonna get into the energy currency thing in just a second. Um, you're unwelcoming, you're not friendly, and then lastly, you're confidence-less. I have seen so many amazing people lose their confidence because they were unable to be productive. And when they weren't productive, they weren't focused. And when they weren't focused, they were distracted. And amazing, greatness, powerful, dynamic, gifted, creative, but unable to produce and un unable to do anything because they were confidence-less. Like, I might have read that up. Confidence with L-E-S-S. -S. Like, flat out. And I don't want you guys to be that person. There's no need for you to be that person. Let me ask you this, though. When you think about distractions, we all have, a, have, a, have a, a admitted and agreed that we're distracted. <laughs> we're very distracted people. How did your distractions get there? Like, how did, your, how did your distractions arrive? Like, where did, where did your distractions come from? I would actually love for you guys to kind of comment. I want to hear what you guys say some of your distractions came from. So what are your, what, where did some of your distractions come from? Yep. So you, I'm going to answer this for you. Um, family, or social media for one, okay. <laughs> Social media, wow, okay, roles, okay. Uh, uh, I hate to see that social media one. <laughs> uh, career, okay. So let me, low self-esteem, that's, that's an honest one. So let me tell you guys something. I want you guys to just put this in your mind. If you can think of your distractions, right, and how they got in your way, can you be honest and say a lot of the distractions that you have currently, you welcome with open arms? Like, could you look at some of your life and look at some of the things that you have going on, some of the distractions that you are aware are fully and totally distractions? Could you say, you know what, at some point, I welcome these distractions with open arms? I know that I can. I know that I can. I can. I can say, you know what, some of my distractions I opened the door for. I went up. <laughs> I laid out the red carpet for some of my distractions. You hear me? Well, this is a real, it's a real concept I want you to think of. How many of your distractions did you open, did you welcome with open arms? Like majority of the difficult of distractions that we are trying to jump over or find our way through or around or over, they came through the doorway of enjoyment. At some point, a lot of our distractions were, whoo, some of the, that's weird. Some of the greatest, and I'm not just talking about people. I'm saying that a lot of our distractions were a source of pure enjoyment at some point in time. Think about that. We're fighting like hell to get over and to get through now, but at some point, that was the door. We, we enjoyed it. What it. Leah said, it's so hard sometimes not picking up the phone and scrolling. Yes, I definitely have welcomed it more times than that. Yes, like we have opened the door and literally made distractions feel comfortable in our lives. Something to think about, so a reality. Um, like, you got to think about that. I'm a person where I'm a very practical person in my approach. I do believe wholeheartedly in the importance of, of us taking credit or taking responsibility, let me say that's a better term, for the things that we have welcomed, created, allowed, um, encouraged, strengthened, 
Like a lot of the stuff that we are fighting against are things that we, if we just say, you know what? I did that. I played a huge part in that. I think it would totally transform and change everything about what we do and how we do it. But it takes a moment where we say, you know what? I'm mature to say, uh, I opened the door for this one. I let this one come in. I knew this distraction should have been gone a long time ago. I knew that if I did the work six months ago to eliminate this distraction, it wouldn't have been um, giving me the headache and the problems and creating the tension in my life that it is right now. But it's because I chose not to let it go, I am now in a space where it's like, whew, I'm working 10 times harder because of something that I welcomed and allowed to stay. So just wanted to just put that out there. Because I'll tell you also this, like small distractions can easily become coping mechanisms. Like you start off distracted, next thing you know, you're addicted. And it's like, how on earth did I get here? Is did because you let your distractions go unchecked. We all do it. I've done it. I still do it. I'm working through it. It's like if you don't, if you do not check your, your small distractions, they become major addictions. And now you've got major life deterrences that you have to find your way through and work out of and work in get free from and all that kind of stuff like that. When all it is, start off as a small distraction that we allow to go unchecked. Um, also, sometimes you can be, a, oh, we haven't even got there. Great point. So Nikolisha mentioned, sometimes you can be <laughs> a distraction to yourself. And I'm gonna, I'll skip through my notes. I don't even need them anymore at this point. The biggest distraction you have in your life is not your money, it's not your spouse, it's not your baby daddy, it's not your toxic friends. The biggest distraction that you have in your life right now is you. Because at the center of it, at the, at the center of it all, you are at the center of it all. Like when you, when you step back and evaluate the situations, evaluate a lot of the situations that are open and pending in your life, guess who's right there in the middle of them? You. Like you. Like you really do have the power to change your life in a moment's time. Especially for us who are fighting through um, people seasons where we're um, having issues and discrepancies, discrepancies or distractions that are coming by way of people. Hey, you can take back your peace, take back your joy, take back your focus. Because all of that stuff is predicated on you. If you don't, it won't. I think I like the way that sounds. I put that on my Facebook. <laughs> if you don't, it won't. If you don't say, you know what, I'm not doing this. This is not going to be a thing for me it'll always be a thing for you. If you don't, it won't. So you've got to kind of say, you know what, whatever, I've got to put on my big, my big kid shoes, I've got to get out my weapons of, for a war, or whatever you want to put on, whatever you got to do. you got to decide in your heart and your mind and in your actions that I want my stuff back. I want my life back, I want my, my focus back, I want my attention back, I want my success back, I want my future. I want my future. Um, Okay, so we're going to jump on now and kind of close this on now because I know I've been going for a minute. So let me give you some signs that you're distracted. Now, these are going to be really funny, but I promise you they're extremely effective. This first one is going to take you out. I guarantee you this first one is going to convict everybody that's on there. Are you ready? The number one sign, one of the, not the number one sign, one of the, the signs for you to realize that you're distracted, one of the signs that you are distracted is that you are on this webinar. <laughs> You can't tell me that wasn't funny. I know you're laughing right now. Thank you so much for being a part of this webinar. But seriously, you go to what you need help with. When you started, when you say, you know what, that's me, and then something pops up on your timeline, you're like, you know what, let me sign up. Let me just get on part of this. I'm not going to tell none of my friends. I don't want any of my friends to realize that I'm distracted and I'm not focused. I'm going I'm to do this one, so I'm going to do this one. Thank you guys for laughing with me. <laughs> it is so true. The fact that you are on this webinar. I knew I was still distracted and working through my distraction stage and phases when I had the idea for the webinar. I said, ain't no way I want to do this. But I was like, you know what? It's because there's probably somebody somewhere who is doing, who is in the same fight that I'm in. And if I'm a few steps ahead in some way, shape, form, or fashion, it's my job and my responsibility to give what I have to them. So thank you guys for being a part of this webinar. The second thing, this one's not going to be as funny. These, the rest of these are going to be really true and concise for you right now. You have a lack of energy, drive, or enthusiasm. That is one of the first signs you will start to you can notice when a person, whether it's you or anybody else, is starting to lose focus, losing um, losing their, their sense of focus, their their attention, like everything about them start they start to become lackluster. They're not excited. Their energy levels are gone. Their um, enthusiasm is just not there. There's no drive. Everything becomes like a okay. Also, they just they just start to you get that slump. 
you just slump. You just slump. Can't, can't think of any other way to say it. You just hit that slump. And lack of energy, enthusiasm, or, um, or drive. The next one, there is no official priorities list. There is no official priorities list. So I said, hear me when I say this. So I know wholeheartedly that we are a very focused people. We were designed to be a focused people. And also I do believe this notion that we were born, um, we know how to follow instructions. We, were, we, have learned, we have been following instructions since we were very small children. So we know how to follow instructions. But what I do believe is that when there's no real list, no real focus point, no real, um, collection center or data center for what it is that we're doing and trying to do, we will automatically become, we, we will literally end up not being focused. So if you do not have a priorities list right now, I want you guys to do that. So what I have behind me, um, so it may look like I'm, a, I'm an advocate for white paper. I literally do this stuff all day, every day. But one of my priority lists for my business, I went through that and I basically the three that I set my money goals, I put my expenses down there. I made sure that I had some major goals on this sheet of paper so that every day when I look at it, I know what I'm looking at, I know what I'm working towards. You know why? Because that's my priorities. Also on this side, what you see is my personal uh, attack list, pretty much what it's called. This is get it together, play time is over. Like get it together, play time is over. I am working through some major areas of, areas of discipline in my spiritual walk, in my finances, and also in my physical body. I made my areas of discipline. I made my, my targets of what I need to do, what, I'm, what, kind of, what kind of results I'm looking to have out of each. I also made a little thing right here saying, what do I need to let go? What needs to move? What needs to be rearranged? What needs to be reassessed? And then lastly, what are my overall end goals for me being committed to myself? Me committing to myself and then me committing to my business. Listen. Official priorities list. You've got to know what you're working towards and what you're working at. The next thing, large amounts of errors. So this may not sound very, uh, this may not apply to everybody, but if you're working a very corporate job, um, if you're starting to see a lot of errors in your work and in what you're producing, there's a great chance that you're distracted. Whether that may be a distraction at work or it may be something that you're taking to work with you. Errors, major, 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 and extreme amounts of errors are key signs and key indicators that you are not focused. That's why things like your boss is able to pick up on when your quality of work is decreased. Remember what I told you guys earlier that when you're focused, that when your quality of what you present is A1. It is quick and it is quality. When you are distracted, it is not, it's not quick. And a lot of times it's, it's full of errors. Um, the next thing, timeliness, poor time management. A distracted person has a hard time being on time. I'll say it again, a distracted person has a hard time being on time. If you are someone that suffers from major time management issues, you don't really get anywhere on time or ahead of time or early. Not saying you have to be sitting in the parking lot at work 15 minutes every day, but you should be able to get there on time at the appointed time. And if you can't, that means you're distracted. That means you're distracted at some point, whether your distraction was last night when you chose to stay up watching a couple extra episodes of your favorite one hour TV show instead of getting in the bed or possibly packing your lunch. Whatever it may be, your lack of timeliness and your poor time management shows your level of distractions, how prevalent distractions are in your life, how active they are, and really how much they are defeating you. The next thing, stress levels. If you stress, you're distracted. So I guarantee that means your energy is going into something that it probably doesn't have to be in, or maybe that so much of your energy should not be in. Um, next thing, excessive amounts of coping. If you spend a lot of your time, a lot of your free time trying to cope, you're distracted. You're focused on something that you probably can't change, that you have no power to remove, or can't, you don't have any power to shift or rearrange, but there's a good chance you have the power to remove all together. A lot of people who are distracted need to go through a mass cleanse, remove, get rid of it, because it's not going to change. So you got to remember what I said earlier. It it don't. So you wait. Like, it won't. So you don't. What did I say? It won't. I don't. If you if you don't, it won't. That's what it was. If you don't, it won't. Simple as that. If you don't, it won't. Next thing: a lack of completion of tasks. A lot of people are very goal and, and task driven, and we, we like to see completion. If you have gotten to a place where you're starting to see not a lot of completion, you're probably distracted. Ask me how I know. So about two months ago, I had a major stress point. Um, my counselor started telling me that it was because I'm starting, I'm getting to that point where I'm about to turn 30, and it's like my 
nose and all that kind of stuff like that. And one of the major indicators that I was not, I was not being very fulfilled, I was like, it feels like nothing is getting done. Everything I set out to do is like I start, but nothing gets completed. You know why? It's because my energies were split. So let me give you my philosophy on the split energies. There's no way you can put 100% into three different things at a time, at the same time. It's just, it's not possible. You cannot put 100% of your all, your focus, your resources, your intellect, your critical thinking skills into three things at one time. All, but in three things at one time. It's not possible. So what we have to do is decide, hey, you know what? My energies, if my energies can only be split two ways, what two ways are my energies going to be split right now? At this time frame, whatever suggested time frame that you have. Here's the thing about it. I think energy is one of the currencies that we don't talk enough about, but it's one of those currencies that you only have so much of. Like you only have so much energy. And once that energy is gone, you have no choice but to stop, rest, recuperate, and start back over. So why not start to conserve and to preserve and to structure and to direct our energies into the right things for limited amounts of time so that we can have optimal results and make great progress in certain areas. I promise you, what's going on right now with most of you guys that are watching this, whether on Facebook or on um, Zoom, is that your energies are split. You are literally trying to do too much at the same time. And it's, the, you're, it's never gonna work. It's never gonna work the way it's supposed to because you're tired, you get tired faster, you end up drained, all of that stuff. You always end up in that place because well, you don't have to stay there. That's not the place you have to be. That's not the place you're supposed to be. This is the thing, take your energy back. Say this with me, I'm taking my energy back. I'm taking my energy back. No more split energy. If I can, if I can only give my all, if I can give 100%, or if I'm going to get 50-50, but that's it. I cannot afford to give all of my energy in, I cannot afford to attempt to give all of my energy in 50 different places. It doesn't work like that because you know what? You come in distracted. You come in unfocused. You come in with too many different things already in play. And guess what? Your mind never goes focused and stops on one thing. It ends up it's everywhere. And now not, not, and now not only is your energy split, your mind is split. Stuff just everywhere, everywhere, okay? Got it, the last one, uncertainty. Uncertainty. If, you're, if you are become the person that doesn't know anything, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You're distracted because all the, every time you say I don't know, there's something that you know. A lot of your I don't know is because the, your, the whatever's in your mind is taking precedence over what's in front of you at that moment. We gotta kill the I don't know. If you, if you become an uncertain person, an, un, an un, unclear and unsure person, you've got, to, you've got to grab yourself and remove yourself from that place, okay? Now, last thing, how to practically eliminate distractions. I told you guys earlier that I am, um, no double minus. I was trying not to use that term specifically because that term does something to me here and it makes me do stuff and say stuff here. But yes, as she said, no double mindedness. And if you do not know, a double minded man is unstable in every single one of his ways. Don't be double minded. How to practically eliminate distractions? Because I believe wholeheartedly there's a practical approach to everything. How to practically eliminate your distractions. Number one, call it what it is. Call it what it is, AKA identify. You have got to call a spade a spade. You have to call your distractions just what they are. It's a distraction. And if you are unclear, talk to me or talk to a close friend. I promise you there's somebody in your life that'll tell you, you've been distracted for years, or you've been distracted since you started this relationship or you've been distracted since this point, or you've been, I promise you, somebody around you will tell you. Call it what it is. Point number one, call it what it is, identify. Number two, assess the why. So this is the thing about it. There's always a reason why. There's always a root cause. There's always a reason why something is happening the way it's happening. Even with your distraction, you have to assess the source. Why am I a distraction? Oh. Why are you a distraction? Why is this a distraction for me? Ask that. 
ask yourself that why is this a distraction for me we can call this your source search why is this a distraction for me number three commit to all things you i guarantee you that out of the people that are watching this and on facebook 90 percent of us i'm going to say myself included you are not a priority in your own life i will shut up you have never and if you have you haven't done it consistently you are not a priority in your own life and you know what that's going to lead you to a life of unfulfillment you are never going to be as satisfied as you could be you are never going to get to your place called there if you don't make yourself a priority you want to know why because your purpose when you make yourself a priority your purpose is included you realize that you know what the mind structures from god are time sensitive and they must be done in excellence and they must be done now you've got to make yourself a priority hear me you've got to make yourself a priority no other way around it you've got to make yourself a priority the next thing my favorite thing yes kristen it's going to be very hard sometimes but let me tell you there is power in no um, I was telling a friend of mine, I've gotten to a place where sometimes when, because I'm making myself a priority, and with that, me, with me being a worker and a workforce, I'll never stop working. I'll never stop thinking. So what I have to do sometimes is simply just say no. Sometimes just because. Hey, you want to do this? No. Can't make it. Well, why? Don't ask me to tell you why, because I don't have a reason why. I just, no, nah, I'm just not going to come. I'm going to lay in my bed and watch TV. I'm going to, I don't know, go for a drive. No is a, no. That's the way you start to quit yourself as a priority, is to say no. Because when you start saying no to other people, you start saying yes to yourself automatically. That was good. That must, thank you, Holy Spirit. When you, st when you start saying no to other people, you say yes to yourself automatically. You need to rest. You need to sit down at home. You need to open up. You, you need to get a sheet of paper and figure out where you are on your goals and your dreams. You got, you need to. When you start, when you say no to other, uh, that was a thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> when you start saying no to other people, it's an automatic yes to yourself, whether it's to your rest, whether it's to a, a, just a moment of a downtime, your self-care. That's the term now, self-care. Um, relaxation, whatever you want to call it, a no to other people is a yes to yourself. Um, and this is my favorite, the fourth one. Um, and this is a, pr a personal practice of mine. When it comes to defeating distractions and eliminating, eliminating distractions out of your life, you can routine your way out of it. Hear me, you can routine your way out of it. That's number four, routine your way out of it. So what I've learned, and correct me if I'm wrong, or try and let me know after 30 days if it works for you. I've realized that the world teaches us that systems are generally really bad and not the greatest thing in the world to have. Total disagreement. There is a such thing called a healthy system and a healthy routine. A lot of us are, having, are able to be distracted because our lives to a certain degree are not focused, centered, or scheduled. This is the thing, focused, centered, or scheduled. Focused, centered, or scheduled. When a person is on, when a person is focused, um, when a person is operating off of a schedule, it changes the way you do what you do. It's almost your body responds to what your mind, what your mind is, what your mind is getting off. So if your mind says, you know, I got to be out of this house by eight thirty tomorrow, your mind, you do it enough. Guess what? Your body starts to get tired the night before at eight thirty at night. It starts saying, you know, let me wind down because I want, I got to get to the point where I know what's going to happen at 8.30. I don't want to be, I swear, I think that my body says to me sometimes, listen, your mind is going to cut on at 9 o'clock. I'm not trying to be behind your mind because your mind's going to stretch. I, I think that sometimes my mind and my body are like trying to, are saying, you know what, Evan's not going to drive me crazy today. Let one of us going to stop. <laughs> I know it may sound a little out, out the wazoo, but I realize it's power in having a routine and a healthy schedule. Most people fail, most millionaires have a schedule. They're usually in the bed by 10, they're not watching a lot of TV, and they're up by 6 a.m. Not there yet. That's not me yet. I might have to be one of those nine o'clock millionaires right now. <laughs> but I'm also, I'm working my way on down because it used to be 10, 
but now I'm at I'm up active and working at nine o'clock. My bed is made by 8.50, 8.55, 8.57, <laughs> at the latest. Like I am working to put myself into can to build myself a healthy schedule and routine that I can stay on for more than three or six months at a time. You know what I'm saying? Because I realize this power when you start to do a healthy routine. It changes everything. We've got to get to a point where we can routine our way out of some stuff. And I'll tell you why I know this. Because there are certain things that just are no longer a distraction anymore because I'm too tired to do it. I'll be completely transparent. You know, when you have yourself a routine of something like a bedtime, when it's hard to stay up past 10 or 11. Or if you are up, it's kind of like you're like waiting on sleep to arise. And when you're waiting on sleep to arise at 9, 10, 10 o'clock at night, if certain things start to present themselves as options, you're too tired to engage. You're too tired to, to have certain conversations. You're too tired to get in the car and go out. You're too tired to be convinced to your friends, hey, let's meet for a, a glass of wine, or let's go do this. Or it's like, no, I'm in the bed, I'm tired. My routine does not allow for me to be distracted. Your routine will not allow, well, your routine can allow you to not to be distracted. But a lot of us, we don't have a routine. We don't have a consistent or a healthy schedule that includes a, barrier, a, barrier, a myriad of things. Like, for example, as soon as this webinar is over, I'm going to the gym. I'm going to do my hour because by 1030, I'm back here. By 11 o'clock, I'm showered and I'm laying in the bed trying to watch TV. So I know by midnight, I need to be somewhat out of here. Because at 8.50 tomorrow, I've got to be up, computer needs to be set up, and that bed has to be made. This is a part of my routine. Discipline your way out of some things. Um, and the last thing, give yourself some time to adjust. I know this might have been a lot of information at one time, um, but it's information that you, can, that you can actually digest instantly and then allow yourself the room to make some mistakes. But this is the thing about it. Distractions have, are not a new thing for you. We have been distracted our entire life. And so when it comes to having making a major life change and a major mindset change, Sometimes you have to give yourself room to make a few mistakes as you are learning to adjust and to move and to maneuver so that you can find the best way for you to do what needs to be done so that you can be at your absolute best. Like for an example, certain things may not work for you that may work for me or certain things your life may not allow that my life allows. But it's okay because distractions can easily be defeated by discipline and focus. Focusing on what's important, committing to yourself and saying, you know what? I am going to schedule and routine myself into the next place in my life. I can. I will. Like, decided people choose to not deal and dwell with distractions. Like, it's a decision. We say, like, things like salvation is a decision, mindset is a decision, poverty is a decision. Being distracted is a decision. You can choose to be focused. I got some scriptures, but I'm not going to do that. You can choose to be locked in and loaded on what's most important. This is the thing about it. You've got way too much to do with the limited amount of energy that you've been allocated. Like I told you guys, that energy thing is a major principle, a major key that we often overlook or don't dive fully into. You've only got a certain amount of energy. And guess what? Once that energy is gone, it's gone. And once it's gone, you must stop. You must rejuvenate. You must relax. You must rest up. You got too much to do with, that, with the allotted amount of energy, so you got to use it wisely. And using it wisely means putting it in the right places, ignoring what's around you, trying to reach on or grab hold to you to remove you from your, um, your areas of focus and you making your strides. So what, basically, those, those things that are trying to distract you, they, they've got to go. They've absolutely just got to go. They've got to go. So, with that being said, I want you guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments now. I know I got it going on Facebook, so I'll check out. If you guys have any questions, drop it right now for me. I wanna, um, I wanna make sure I answer some of these. Like, take your energy back. Take your energy back. That's right, Lori. Take your energy back. Um, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop some of those now. And while you're preparing your questions, because I do know this, a lot of us are, are not able to fulfill and walk out this thing called purpose because there's just too much. We, we're working on everything but what we should be working on. I've got two things I want to offer you guys. Um, I've got an amazing book called For the Purpose Chaser. A lot of people are looking for purpose and can't find it because they don't know where to look for it. Not realizing they're standing slap dab in the middle of it. Or they're able to decipher through, hey, this is not purpose for me. But also this helps you, this, this book also has a chapter that helps you walk through if I'm too busy to see what I'm supposed to be doing. Because I believe wholeheartedly, that's where a lot of us are. We're too busy to see where it is, see where it is and what it is we're supposed to be doing. 
flat out. Like, you're too busy to see that you are working in the wrong area. You are too busy to see that you are working on the wrong things at the wrong time. You're too busy to see it. Because you're seeing progress and you're making progress, it looks like you're doing what you should be doing. And honestly, you're not. You're flat out not. And then the second thing, I want to offer this to you guys. So um, I am a personal coach. I do a lot of life coaching. I do believe in helping people connect the dots and finding solutions, not just for business, but also for their personal life. I have a special that I'm doing called the 50 for 50. I am giving you my mind for 50 minutes for only 50 bucks. Now, I'll be honest. My coaching sessions are not that. They're a lot, a lot more than that. But I want to offer this to you guys tonight. Take advantage of it. It's only 50 bucks. Schedule your session at the link right there because I know this for, 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 for sure. The fact that you're distracted and the fact that you're in this, you're looking for clarity. And I do believe that because you've eliminated, you're willing to commit to eliminating your distractions, you're going to need some clarity and some solutions and some direction and some strategy to get done what needs to get done for the rest of your life so that you can have the rest of this year and win. Like, for example, playtime is over. 2019 will end great for me. That was my declaration for this year. I've got to finish this year stronger than what it is that I started. And guess what? My distractions don't matter. So I encourage you guys um, to click on one of those links, get that ebook, select your session right now. Like select, get it in this week. I promise you, get it in this week. You're not going to regret it. I've been doing this for quite a while, but I know firsthand sometimes you just need a break. Sometimes you need somebody to say, you know what? I need a little help. I need somebody to make this a little easy for me. And so what I've done, I have, I have tried to help make this easy for you. Um, I have, actually have some of my clients that I've done sessions on that, that still jump on my webinars. And they're like, hey, you know what? I believe in what you're doing. So take advantage of both of those specials that you look for those who are trying to solidify and identify what purpose is and what it looks like for them. And then most importantly, for, those, for everyone who needs some assistance, some guidance, some clarity, somebody just kind of throw their ideas off of, for you, somebody's like, hey, you know what? That might not be it for you. Or let's look at this perspective. Or let's, let's think this all the way out. Let's have that conversation by you clicking the link and securing your coaching time. I would love to look, look forward. To, and I, love, I would love to talk to you, and I look forward to talking to you soon. We got one of the questions that came through. Um, what's, your favorite, what's your favorite tip in processing your yes? How do you manage your yes so that it works for you? I manage my yes so that my yes works for me by being very intentional on, um, on what I say yes to. So I said yes. Like, overall, I said yes. But my yes does not include a yes to everything. My yes be becomes a no when I start saying yes to everything. It is not those things that I should have been saying yes to. So like, yes, I gave God a yes. Ooh. But when I start to get man a yes to everything, when I start to get burnt out, tired, stressed, some of those yeses, some, some of that that, should have been a, should, that I said yes to should have been a no. And as a result of me not saying no, I'm now burned out, I'm not tired, I'm not frustrated. I'm now exposed to stuff that I should have never been exposed to um, or exposed to things prematurely because I was giving out too many yeses off in the name of trying to uh, be something for someone. So I hope that answers your question. If not, let me know. We got one on Facebook. Um, how do I limit watching TV every day? This is one of my major distractions. How much time should a person be on social media during the week? So it depends. It, it depends, um, Miss Flory. So I'll say this, watching TV every day, I try to get two hours in because you know what? I know that my brain likes to go. And what happens in the first hour of TV, I'm not really watching. My brain is still going by that second hour. I watch TV and therefore I have kickstarted my relaxation process. So I, I, I would say a healthy balance, maybe one or two hours a day, but you, have, you probably should diversify your content, diversify your, what you're watching. You probably shouldn't watch the same thing every day or watch different types of things because also we can't act like TV is the devil. There are a lot of great influences. There are a lot of great knowledge and different things that are available to us by way of television. So take advantage of TV, but just be moderate in what you're watching and also watching your times. When you start to realize that you're up 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning every night, the problem. Because if you got an early morning, that's not, that you're not giving your body enough time to get good rest. Um, we got one more question. What is your approach to setting small goals to accomplish big things? My approach to setting small goals to accomplish big things. Hey, actually going in knowing what is listed, what is needed. If I had my planner, I would show you guys. I use a planner every day for one reason. It helps me itemize what I have to do. 
So I'm able to really go in, check off, check off, check off, check off, check off. Also, what that does when I have big tasks, it allows me to itemize and break down my big tasks into small pieces. So I'm not overwhelmed by the big task in front of me. A lot of us get stressed out because the task seems so big, but that's because we've never chosen to make it small and make it uh, bite-sized and make it easy to dissect and easy to break down and work down and work around and work through. So that's how I do it. I really identify what the big task is and make it a step-by-step -step program. Make it a step-by-step -step thing. As I said earlier, guys, we are naturally inclined and naturally we know how to follow directions and instructions. So make this thing easy on you. Don't stress yourself out. I have really been, um, so one of my clients is going to be a vendor, Dr. Camila Stevenson. She's going to be um, selling some amazing products at the World Changer Summit. You know what I did? So I know that World Changer Summit is in October every year. I started asking questions in August. Hey, what do you have in mind for World Changers? Because I didn't want to get to uh, in the mid-September and then all of a sudden World Changers now becomes a big, big task item when it could have been small, small pieces, little by little. And that helps me. Because you know why? Because now I'm not overwhelmed by World Changers. I'm already going and planning for 2020 as, as items for World Changers next week are arriving. And more items arrive today. I'm just sitting in my living room. But it's because I started early. So I think that's also a great, a great tip. Um, get started on big things early. Don't don't be don't be surprised by it. Don't let them surprise you. Get ahead of get ahead of the schedule. Get ahead of the time. And if anybody does anybody have any more questions? Any more questions? Let's see if I got any more here. All good. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me on how to eliminate distractions. I'm going to put this video up on my YouTube for those who um. Well, I want you guys to take advantage of the getting the book for the purpose chaser i'll copy that link again you can click that there um it'll be available all night for a 9.99 and also for the 50, 50 for 50 coaching special you guys take advantage of it i promise you i love what i do and i've been doing this for four to five years and i've had the opportunity to work with some of literally the biggest and the brilliant minds like one sometimes you have to remind yourself of where you are like i'm not bragging on me i'm bragging on you guys I've worked with some individuals that are on my iTunes that, that blow my mind. Because, hey, you know what? I heard you, man, you're a great thinker. I want to be able to kind of bounce some ideas. I'm looking to get, I'm looking to take what I do outside of just music or outside of just preaching or, or pastoring. I want to start to do other things where I can position myself to really just show the world all that's in me. That could be you. That could be you. I encourage you guys to take advantage of using this mind of mind that God has trusted me to help you guys dive through ideas for you to kind of get great and get going and get going moving forward. Also, for those who may have a desire to write a book, you no, know I just go to my website, imevanbrown.com, or go to visionbirthers.com, go to the store. We have some amazing products in there. Browse around, join our mailing list, and just kind of, if you have any questions, just hit the contact thing at the bottom and just fill up, put your question in, and me and my team will get back with you as soon as possible to be able to help you in any way that we can. This is what we do. This is what I love to do. So, guys, thank you so much. And make sure there are no more questions. Thank you guys so much for being a part. I appreciate it. I look forward to it. This video will be up. So, hey, share it with your family. Share it with your friends. Send it to them saying, hey, you know what? You need some help. This guy gave me some great, great nuggets on how to eliminate some distractions from my life. So, thank you all so much. I appreciate you all being a part. And I look forward to being with you guys again pretty soon. Next month, I'm going to be doing a webinar, hopefully, with a very, very, very special guest. I think you guys will really enjoy. So, have a great night. Win this week.